Hi everyone, Daniel here, the creator of the Relationship Model of Addiction. I'm really grateful right now, here I am out of my deck. This is the first window of no rain in four days. So here's where I love to be, here's where I love to connect with you from, and here I am. So again, what I'm doing with you is to tr provide you information and tools and help you on your journey out of getting out of addictive relationships and into healthy, emotionally nourishing relationships. For the last several weeks, we've been focusing on the second stage of recovery, which is developing a relationship with yourself. And what does that mean? Once again, quick review is that uh, you, without awareness, there is no self. So building or developing a relationship with yourself has to do with being self-aware and emotionally connected so you can say whatever it is that's going on with you, whatever your experience is, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're wanting at any given moment in time. And that's how you come out and have presence in your life and in your relationships. And now today, what I want to talk to you about, last week we talked about the connectivity, your connectivity quotient and how when you have developed a relationship with yourself, your connectivity quotient is increasing, which means that you can connect more easily to others, which means that others are gonna be uh, connecting with you more easily and drawn to you. It means that you're gonna be more magnetic and more charismatic. It means that you're gonna be able to be understood and gotten more easily, and that you're going to be able to understand and get others and tune in on uh, to what their experience is on an emotional level when you're dialed into your own experience. So your connectivity quotient goes up. Now, what I want to talk to you about today was an attribute of awareness that it's not a technique or a tool per se, but it's more uh, kind of like um, an advanced awareness uh, experience to have, you know, where you're becoming more aware and I'm leading to your ability to discern, your discernment uh, acumen, which is, again, something in this stage when you're developing this relationship with yourself, you're becoming more self-aware and hopefully more able to discern. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about two different kinds of discernment which is one is kind of what's going on inside of you and all the different levels of your experience and uh, being, being able to distinguish and discern between all of those different levels of experience so you could then again be more present and connectable with other people. But also another, the other kind of uh, discernment is in relation to other people relational discernment, awareness of what's going on with you when you're relating and in relationship with other people. So discernment, self-awareness and the ability to discern what's going on inside of you. What am I talking about here is your uh, ability to have, uh, to trust and uh, trust your intuitions and sense of what's going on inside of you again, but in a more subtle and uh, distinct way. I'm um, talking about knowing when you're reacting to someone as opposed to uh, being more present and uh, responding to the situation in a, in a way that's more balanced and equal to the situation as opposed to having some reacting from uh, pent up feelings and hurt or uh, just a residue of emotion that's causing you to not react to what's happening, but react to what's been building up inside of you. But my point is to be able to discern that you are reacting as opposed to not being in present time. Another is uh, knowing when you're feeling good about yourself versus when you're not feeling good about yourself because your communication and how you relate is going to change depending on whether you're coming from a place of unworthiness and not being good enough versus coming from a place of self-acceptance, wholeness, self-love. Uh, 
I'm also talking about having a sense of what it is that you want that's going to make a difference to you, that's going to bring you joy, that's going to really represent the truth of where, what is going on inside of you. What do you want? What do you, just being able to say what it is you want is a, a monumental, it makes a monumental impact in a relationship, but you need to have this developing awareness and ability to discern what it is you're wanting so you can own it, uh, embrace it, express it, manifest it, and represent it. So these are, these are aspects of discernment that have to do with finer attuned self-awareness. And also, there's different levels I mentioned before of your experience, what's going on inside of you. Discernment has to do with your ability to know, uh, to have a sense of what your intuition is, a sense of what your thoughts are, as opposed to feelings, as opposed to what's going on in your body, uh, and be able to uh, distinguish what's going on in your body versus what, what's going on around you, and being aware of all the different levels of internal and external stimulation that's coming into you and how you're responding to that from these different places. So, Moving now to discernment, relational awareness, and being discerning as to what, when you're relating to someone, what's going on inside of you. And what I'm talking about here, one thing most importantly, is when you have the ability to discern in relational awareness, you are able, this is the most important uh, piece of relational awareness, is being able to set a boundary and a defining boundary, that's you and here I am. You, me. And a lot of times what happens in relationships, well, you know, in recovery and relationships, you don't really have, uh, you're not really connected to yourself and you're being cut off from your feelings and um, you don't have a self to bring to the relationship and you tend to, as we had discussed, identify uh, your well-being and self-worth and identity depends on how the other person responds to you. Well, when you have this discernment capacity to set a boundary, you are creating a space where it's safe for you to come out because it's, it's clearly defined. That's you and that's me. So I'll give you an example. I, have, I had this incredible experience with a client recently where, who's early in recovery and she's just beginning to emerge. She's just beginning to uh, a relationship with herself where she has more self-awareness. She's more emotionally tuned in, but she's able to separate now herself from her partner. Whereas up until for 20 years of marriage and up until maybe this week, whenever her partner would criticize her or be angry with her, she would be riddled with self-doubt and inadequacy and what's wrong with me, it's my fault, I'm not good enough. And what she came in to share with me, which was just so incredible, the sign of growth and self-emergence was that she was able to say that for the first time when she was sitting across the table from her husband, when he was railing on her for the way she's parenting or she's, she's not doing this or she's doing that with the kids, she got that the, how he sees her, how he feels to her, uh, feels about her, how he holds her, what he says to her is different than how she feels about herself. And this was so liberating to her where all of a sudden now she has a ground to walk on, that she has a place in herself that she could fall back on as a reference place and does not have to, um, she no longer defines herself according to what her partner thinks about her or sees her. So there's much more to talk about with discernment, relational awareness, discernment and what's going on inside of you. But the, the biggest, the most, one, beginning point around relational awareness and discernment is just being able to separate me and you. That's you, here I am. And then go from that place. This is what's going on with me, and then I want to find out what's going on with you. And it creates a safety for you both to come out fully in your own individual experience. So, so I'm winding this down right now. There's, uh, so until we meet again next week, 
I don't know what's going to be in store for you next week, but there's going to be something coming. So until then, the quality of your relationships is the quality of your life.